Hello, everyone, and welcome to our presentation on accurate, reliable gas turbine inspections. I'm broadcasting to you live from our North America visual headquarters here in Skinny Atlas, New York. This is where we design, manufacture, and repair all of our video bore scopes. And we're actually lucky enough to have the CFM56 engine right on our shop floor. So I'll be doing a demonstration on that for you here shortly. My name is Dennis Lavin. Uh, I'm a senior product manager. I've been with the business for 19 years now, uh, both in commercial roles and as a product manager. I manage the Everest Mentor Flex video probe. Shortly, I'll be joined by my colleague, Tom Danvers. He's over in the UK. Uh, Tom has over 20 years of experience um, at an aerospace engine OEM um, over in the UK uh, as a subject matter expert. So wealth of knowledge from Tom. Excited for what he has to share with you uh, coming up shortly here. So I'll dig into the agenda here briefly, um, but first let's just cover a couple housekeeping items on the webinar itself. So if you look at your screen, there's several control panels at the bottom of your screen and just know that you can move those windows around. You can expand them, make them larger, however you'd like. If you wanna make the slide portion larger, you can just click the top right corner to make that bigger. Um, there is an engagement tool where you can actually request a demonstration of our products. So that can be a live demo or a virtual demo. So that's kind of a cool tool. Um, if you have questions, so please, we encourage questions throughout, um, but you'll just have to enter those in the Q&A engagement tool. And then we'll save some time at the end. We'll make sure we get to those questions for you. And then lastly, we have a survey. That would be helpful if you could go ahead and fill that out. That helps us to improve these events. Uh, most of all, it helps us know what, what's the next topic we should cover. What do you wanna hear about next? So if you could take a moment to fill that out. So let's jump into the topics for today, the agenda. So today's conversation is all about gas turbines. Okay, so you know over the years, gas turbines have evolved to meet the increasing demands for efficiency and flexibility, but so too have video boroscopes. The technologies come a long ways over the last 10 years and even the last six months with with the onset of you know assisted defect recognition with Metrovisual IQ. Some really exciting stuff has come out recently. And the theme of today's conversation is really going to be efficiency. So inspection efficiency. How do I manage my data more efficiently? So I'll start off by talking about men, menu directed inspection. That's non-device software. And then we'll go through inspection works insight which is a cloud-based software. And then Tom will take you through Inspection Work Store. That's a cool way to download information directly to the Metrovisual IQ. And then he'll go through real 3D measurement. Um, he'll cover uh, auto depth assist, which is an automated measurement to make your life a little bit easier and more efficient. And then finally, some analytics. So we have a new analytic called Blade Counter that automatically counts blades for you and then uh, assisted defect recognition analytic called LM2500 assist. So those are the topics. Why don't we go ahead and jump right in? So we'll start with streamlined inspection workflow. So how I'll do this, I'll go through a couple slides here, introduce the content and shift over to the engine here and we'll do a live demo for you. So starting with menu directed inspection, we call it MDI for short. This is a software that lives on the bore scope. It's an on-device software. What is going to do is through your inspection and it's going to give you sort of a menu tree on your screen and lead you to where you are in the engine so if you look at the the scope there you see some menus so first you tell the boroscope where in the engine or whatever asset you're inspecting you are and it's going to automatically tag that image um, with a context sensitive tag so you'll know by looking at that image where it was captured in addition to that it's also going to give it a smart file name so you'll be able to look at the file name and know exactly where that image was captured without even opening it. So those we refer to sort of as rich data tags. We'll get more into that as we talk about the back end. How do you manage this data? The next thing that MDI does is it's going to organize your results. And I'm going to show you that here on the file manager of this boroscope. So it's going to put it all in a nice folder. You'll have all your raw data, so your images, your videos, your measurements all in one folder. The folder will be appropriately named for you. And the last thing it does, it's going to actually allow you to create a report right on the boroscope. So if you think about it, let's say you're doing a full engine inspection, maybe a front to back, it's eight to 12 hours, you're generating all this data, you're capturing hundreds of images, possibly videos, measurements, what do you do with all that? 
well, if you want to create a report, you could go back to your office and, you know, sit there for a few hours and load images into a Word document. But with MDI, if you just hit the report button, it's going to do all that for you and put it into a nice report. It'll be in PDF and Word document format. So the Word doc, you can edit after the fact if you'd like. Um, so it's really going to save a lot of time on the back end with the reporting. It's going to drive consistency. You know, so if you have multiple technicians doing inspections, those reports are going to look consistent. They're going to, you know, drive, you know, consistent inspection results. And then finally, it's going to improve the decision making process. So that's that's kind of a high level of MDI that's on the device. But what do you do with all that that data afterwards? Where, where do you put it? How do you share it? Um, that's where InspectionWorks Insight comes in. So that's a cloud based platform. And, you know, the cool part about this device, the Everest Mentor Flex over my shoulder or the Mentor Visual IQ is you can actually wirelessly upload inspection data right from the boroscope to InspectionWorks Insight. And so once it's in that environment, you have some tools, you can share it with colleagues or customers so they could have instantaneous access to that data before you have even left the job site. Um, you can also you know, sort it and filter it to look at trends across various assets. And that's where those rich data tags come in. I mentioned the smart file names. Well, when you upload that data, when it comes from an MDI, it's automatically organized in Insight because it has those data tags. So it can organize it for you. Then it's much easier to manage once you get into the cloud environment. And then finally, you can create some custom reports in Insight as well, if you'd like to do that. So I know that's kind of a new, you know, a lot of customers already have a way to manage their data, maybe a homegrown solution. So they might be hesitant to try something like this. So we've done a 30 day trial where it's a free test drive essentially. So if you go to inspectionworks.com, you can start a 30 day trial, give it a whirl, see how it works with your inspection workflow and, and maybe it's something that you'd be interested in. So um, let me just show kind of a high level. This is like the 30,000 foot view of the whole digital ecosystem, just to give you some context of where these bits fit. So for today's webinar, we're gonna focus on the inspection itself and the post inspection. You know, so during the inspection on the borescope, on the engine, you might be running an MDI. So you'll start by starting your MDI up. Then you may, you know, perform a couple measurements to find an indication on a blade. And you might also be running ADR, assisted defect recognition. So those all come together during the inspection. And then you're gonna report out your results at the end. And then comes the post inspection. That's what we're talking about inspection works insight you can analyze and share up in the cloud so that's kind of the the high level look of everything so what i want to do now is let me shift over from the powerpoint i'm going to share my screen here Thank you. and we're going to show you a live demo of this stuff so i'll go over to my horoscope screen here so you should be seeing my screen so I have my 6.1 millimeter uh, Everest Mentor Flex. It's in the HPC of the CFM56. I have a side view blue tip and I'm looking at uh, this compressor blade. Um, so I'm gonna show you MDI, but I wanna start by showing you the results of MDI. So if I go into my file manager, all these files, this is an inspection that was done without using MDI. So this is just a random inspection, no MDI. If you look at the file names, we have a lot of data here, and these file names are just, you know, date stamps. That's kind of the default file name without MDI. And so there's no real context to them. You don't know where that was captured. Um, if you uploaded it to some backend, you know, sharing system, it wouldn't be able to organize it. Um, so let's see the difference here. If I go into this top left folder, top left of your screen, that folder is called demo cfm 56 3 and so dash one, two, two, seven. So that's already a little bit better because it's already giving me what engine I'm in. It's giving me the engine serial number. And so I go into that and what you're seeing here, this is organized data. So you see the file names are all smart file names. I can take one look at that and I know where it was captured. Um, and you'll even notice there's a couple in here that are flagged. So if I flagged an image, maybe I found an indication, it's got the word and then lastly, I mentioned reports. So you see this PDF and Word document. So that's already organized right in this nice little folder after an MDI. And if I open the PDF, here's an example of a borescope report that was done automatically using MDI. 
in this case, it's, it was done with a metric visual IQ video probe. And this is some of the stuff that's automatically added. So you see your title information, your engine serial number, date, time, that's stuff that you enter, the technician enters before they do their inspection. And then this inspection summary table is automatically created um, by the program. So nobody, no user had to create this in Word doc. And it's just kind of a nice high level view of how many images I captured where I captured them, and if any of them were flagged. And then if I scroll down, we get into the meat of the, of the report. You see some images on the left, data on the right. Underneath the image, you have your file name. And so before you report this out, you have the option to choose how you want this layout to look. But you see it's, it does a nice job of organizing the results, and this took no back-end time at all. It was done right on the board scope. So that's an example of an MDI report. So how do we get there? Let's let's go back to the beginning of when we started that MDI. So what you're going to do when you start your inspection, you hit this MDI soft key, bottom of your screen. I'm going to hit the resume button because I already had uh, MDI started. I'm just going to finish it off uh, for you guys here. So we have a, we're good on time here. So this is the, the information that you saw at the top of that report. So this can be customized. It doesn't have to be customer site or cycles. It can be whatever you want when you build this particular template. So I'm gonna move forward and start my inspection. So now you see this menu tree and now you're gonna tell the system, where am I in the engine? Um, so I'm gonna say I'm in the HPC, you know, I'm in stage one and I'm looking at a rotor blade. Okay, so I told it where I am. Look at the top left of the screen. You see HPC one rotor blades. So that is burned into the image. If I capture an image and save it, that's going to be tied to that image. If I have any videos, that will be part of that image. Uh, also note that that's a touchable feature. If I touch that, it actually skips me back to the menu tree, kind of a cool hidden feature that some people don't know about. Um, so now if I go ahead, let's say I want to save an image of this compressor blade, I'll hit save. It's going to give me a couple options. One, I can save it with a flag if I have an indication. I can add a comment. It just brings up the virtual keyboard. That's kind of a, you know, custom comment you can do, or you can do an observation. If I hit that, this is a predetermined set of, of observations that I created that are context sensitive to this part of the engine, right? So if I was in the combustor, I may have a completely different set of observations. And it's a good way to standardize how your team or your technicians qualify certain things. So I'm gonna call this one typical. There's no issues, I'm gonna hit save. So let's go ahead, my turning tool, let's go to the next blade here. We'll do one more image. So looks like we have an issue there. So obviously a neck or missing material there. So we'll go ahead and hit save. I'm gonna save that with a flag, of course. I'm gonna go observation. Let's say that's missing material. So that's gonna be part of my report. I'll hit save. And that's it. that's enough for this, we'll move forward. So let's say I'm done, I took all my images. This could be two images or 200. Um, I'm going to go back to list, and now I want to report this out. So I'm going to hit the report soft key on the far right, and this gives me a preview. Before I go ahead and finalize my report, it's showing me on the left side of the page, okay, I have two, image, two images per page, data on the right. I can customize that if I want. So let's just go quick to settings. Maybe I want to do, you know, a different amount of images per page. So I'll go, um, let's see here. Scroll down, page layout, and I'm going to go, let's do three images per page, text on the left. And this is where you can add a custom cover page, you can add a custom endnote, and you can really customize how this report's going to look. So I'm going to go back, I'll preview it. Let's, let's take a quick look to see how this is going to show up before I hit the report button. Okay, so here's my default cover page, and you see there's the title information I entered. Here's my inspection summary. I had, I had captured a bunch of images before this, and there's my images on the right, three images per page. So you can see how easy this is. It's pretty straightforward, um, and it's a really nice looking report that can be modified post-process if you need to. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit generate. So now it's generating the port right on my bore scope.
And when this is done, I'm going to have that nice folder that's organized with all my results, including raw data, um, PDF, and the Word doc. So let's say I want to go ahead and upload this to the Insight platform. So I'm going to go into my global menu. I've already logged into Insight. So I'm just going to hit New Upload. And I'm going to go up. Let's see. I think I want to go one more up. And we're going to select this and hit Upload. I'm going to upload that whole folder. So I did take um, a few videos, took some measurements and several images. So this is a fairly big report, it's bigger than just the two images I showed you. So it might take, you know, maybe a minute or so, depending on how much data you have. But the nice part about this is if you have, you know, a customer or somebody who's managing these inspections, they're gonna have access to this right away. They don't need to wait for you to go back to the office use a thumb drive, put it on a PC, email it to them. Um, this is just a nice way to, to give them access right away and then they can share it appropriately. Okay, so success, that was uploaded. This shows all the details, that's all the images and all the data, that's, so I had a bunch of images, that's how much stuff I uploaded. So what I'll do now is I'm gonna go back to the PC and now this, let me just give a refresh. So this is Inspection Works Insight cloud environment that you're seeing here now. So what I want to do, if I want Tom Danvers over in the UK to see this, I have to publish it for him. So I'm going to go to my inspections. I'm going to go to drafts. And so these are, right now, these are for my eyes only. These haven't been published. Tom cannot see them. Here's the inspection that I just... Uh, uploaded. So June 28th, we'll open that up. I'm going to go ahead and publish this. Yes, I want to publish it. And now Tom's going to be able to see that on his end. So that's how the way you share it with other folks. Now coming in Q4, we're going to do a new software release on the Mentor Flex. This feature is already available on Mentor Visual IQ. You can notify, I could notify Tom Danvers from my Borescope by sending him an email and that in turn publishes it right away. So you wouldn't have to come over here and publish it. You could just send him a link and he could get direct access. So I just published that. I'm going to go back and stop sharing my screen. And Tom's going to go ahead and take the ball and uh, in a moment show you that inspection. Thank you, Dennis. Uh, hello, everybody. My name's Tom Danvers. I'll be taking you through the remaining portion of this webinar. Um, just a quick one from me, if I may. Um, a big thank you for joining in on this webinar. Um, uh, thank you for taking the time to uh, share this with us. So I've I've just grabbed the uh, grabbed the screen and I'm showing uh, my screen from here. I'm I'm sat over in the UK, a few miles away from Dennis's uh, Dennis's location, and so I, I've logged into Inspection Works. Um, there's my initials, Tom Danvers. Uh, I'm a member of the Waygate demo account name or tenant name we call it, uh, as is Dennis. Um, and I've I've logged in and I have a series of tabs down my left hand side. I'll be talking you through Insight now and later on talking through uh, the, the store tab. Um, so this is uh, um, the overall inspection view. Uh, well, the, all of the inspections now uploaded to um, Inspection Works Insight against this Waygate demo. So this is all sort of demonstration data, not customer data. So I've just refreshed my screen. Um, and I now see, uh, I'm going to order it in terms of the date. And I see Dennis has, has uploaded um, today's date. Um, oh, and someone else has uh, <laughs> uploaded today as well. My colleague Katir somewhere else in, in, the, in the world. So I'm going to upload, oh, well, I'm going to click into the inspection that Dennis has just uploaded from the Mental Flex. Um, and because as we've been discussing this is an inspection that contains um, MDI information. Inspection Works Insight recognizes that code and sorts the information in accordance with, in this case, the stages that exist within that MDI template that that inspection was captured within. So the, the cloud network, the cloud platform 
recognises this is a CFM 56-3, and there's your serial number. And these were the various stage, various stage nodes that exist within that MDI template. Again, just just to circle back slightly, that was all created within the pre-inspection application that Dennis briefly showed on one of his screens called MDI Builder. We haven't taken you through the MDI Builder, but this is so. This has been created in advance of doing the inspection. Um, the boroscope has captured the appropriate stages uh, or information that the inspector, in this case, wanted to capture. And I have a range of images, video, and data. If I could just click on the data tab, I actually have access to the MDI template that was used to generate this report. So that's a kind of a useful little uh, piece of information that can be shared offline. So we have um, also two videos. I, I can see two videos that were captured by Dennis and the range of images, all sorted into the various stage nodes that you see here. So if I click on, HP compressor and perhaps click on stage four. I can see one one image here. Um, it's been flagged. There is observational material in, in there, so I can just hover over that. And actually, this is the copy of the NIC that um, that you must have previously saved before doing this live demo. So if I click on here, we enter what we call the light box view. So this was a measurement that was performed by Dennis on the NIC uh, on the compressor blade to determine the depth of this NIC. Um, using the Mentor Flex. So there's, a, there's useful information. Now, I, I can quickly, as an overview, if I click back up to the top, I can sort of perhaps just view all of the flagged and commented images. You know, this, this might be an inspection that contains hundreds of images and videos. Perhaps you're only wanting to really sort through those that contain uh, characterizations or observational materials uh, against the images. Some of those images may be just saved without any of that data. So there's a quick way of sort of filtering through all of that information that contains uh, information that was associated with uh, the defects or the, the components and the images that were saved. Um, so it's a, it's a more, more powerful and more user um, uh, friendly platform operating on, on 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 here on the browser than on the boroscope. You'll appreciate it's a small small screen. Um, some of the tools, the basic tools, are available on the boroscope, but you have more available here in the cloud platform. Um, Inspection Works Insight really does act as a as a means upon which to not just sort and better sort and communicate the information and report that information within Insight, but it's also a point upon which you can capture uh, and carry out sort of uh, actionable insights based on a range of inspections for that given serial number, for instance, or a given component. Uh, but quickly, whilst I'm in this inspection, I'm able to just flick through a number of tabs here. So I can see a range of um, fields here. I can enter some of the information that is missing. I can also see some of the, uh, this is all entered on the device using the template loaded into uh, Dennis's Mentor Flex. Um, and, and here we have this is all customizable page. This is a standard template that we have. But if this was a if this was a, a customer template, then this would be information pertaining to your particular needs on your cover page, for instance, that you might want adding before generating a report here within Inspection Works Insight. I won't go through the example of generating a report. It's very similar to what you've seen on Dennis perform on the boroscope but it will contain a lot more information. It's customizable information. So should should you the, the end user want to be able to use this tool, this is this is kind of just a standard template, but um, by by customizing this and adding all sorts of uh, additional fields, they don't have to be free form text. They can be drop down menu text in order to reduce that uh, um, repeatability irrepeatability that you get between one inspector and the other. This can be information that really is, can be standard. And, and because uh, the upload included the reports that were generated on the device, I have a copy here on the cloud platform. So I have the PDF and Word document. And, and I have the option to download and then view them on my, my, my PC or indeed uh, move towards another workflow. I wasn't going to take you through all of this, but this is the workflow associated with capturing a report. Uh, I can, again, I can go through all of the inspection images up, uh, in the report or specifically choose particular ones, maybe those that have annotations and measurements included, for instance. 
So it's a quick way of really going through that and pressing the button to generate a report. We're here within um, Inspector Winks Insight. So going back to the overview page, um, here we have um, the, the first screen that I showed you. Um, and I just quickly wanted to show you by clicking at sort of an advanced search field um, by going through and selecting uh, the various drop down menus associated with the templates uh, or perhaps um, the, uh, the components that were inspected or might be wanting to select and, and find images that contain certain defect characterizations. So these are the drop down menus associated with all of the defects that were um, or all of the images and videos that contained characterizations associated with the list that you see in here, for instance. So very powerful uh, advanced tool, uh, search tool that you have available here um, in order to filter out uh, really the inspections that you perhaps might be wanting to uh, obtain and, and determine uh, the presence of. Uh, um, at a, rather than sifting through each individual images for each individual inspection upload, for instance. So that's a quick overview of what we call Inspection Works Insight. Um, wanted to just quickly talk uh, about what this this tab looks like. This this part. This is a separate product called Inspection Works Store. Um, we have two stores: a public store and a private store. Um, as I mentioned, I'm log in, logged in as a particular sort of account number called Waygate Demo in this instance. So I have access to the private store associated with my account, num account name. So this is the contents of the Waygate demo private store. So I have a range of uh, applications or programs. So these are NDI files I have here, documents and videos. And I'll show you shortly that I can access those on the Boroscope, uh, as well as the content that you see here in, in, the, in the public store. Actually, I'll be showing you through really what's in the public store to save me logging in. Uh, this is a secure space. The private store space is a secure space. Uh, so for the interest of time, I won't be logging into the private store on the device, but it's uh, equally as accessible on the MVIQ today. So quickly, from a browser experience perspective, uh, by um, this, is, this contains all of the content uh, that Waygate Technologies generates and deposits on the stores. Uh, and since this is an RVI webinar, you can quickly down select and you've got all of the RVI content uh, in terms of software, applications, documents, and media. If, for instance, I want to down select even further what type of MDI product, the old outgoing XLG3, or perhaps selecting the MVIQ, um, again, all the content associated with the MVIQ in this instance. So we have the two soft, latest software updates um, that's now available, and you can download those on your to your thumb drive or to your local drive on your computer, transfer them to a USB stick. Um, or as you might know, you can down, uh, uh, invite the instrument, the device itself, to perform updates over the air without the need to transfer files onto a USB removable thumb drive, for instance. And on the device, I'll quickly show you um, how how easy it is to obtain information such uh, and access this very same information, these applications, which essentially uh, currently are uh, MDI templates. They could be other applications. They could be defect recognition analytics. They could be all sorts of information uh, pertaining to either this is a public store, but it could be a private store where you could deposit private information associated with workflow inspections, reference materials, perhaps some videos or some other images um, contain, you know, and so we categorize those as media documents and applications. So yeah, just drawing your attention to both Inspection Works Insight and Store. So um, there is a free trial available um, to anyone out there. Uh, just log on to inspectionworks.com, click on the free trial button. You're invited to type in your email and basically uh, run through a simple process where you set up your name, your account name that you perhaps might want to uh, provide. And within a few clicks of a mouse buttons, uh, you're able to basically perform uh, this kind of demonstration that you've just heard Dennis take you through uh, in terms of uploading information from up to five MVIQ or Mentor Flex devices and upload and, and experience this space for yourselves. Just clicking some buttons and transferring us to my horoscope. Just one second.
So you should now see my boroscope uh, screen. Um, so just to show, I'll flip back to a live state. I've got that image, and I'll quickly show you Inspection Work Store by pressing Store, Public Store. You're able to see the range of applications that you see on the top left-hand side, documents, and media. Um, quickly taking you through the download of a typical, in this case, MDI template. I'm going to download uh, an Aerospace One BR700. Download. It's a very short file, so it really does take no time at all to download. Um, and by going into the MDI soft key, press manage, press load, and I'm already in the D drive. Uh, and there, if I flick to MDI uh, BR700, that's the one I've just downloaded from the store onto my D drive, and I now see this new window appear, BR700. So that's how quick and easy it is to download. Um, you can do this today on your devices through the public store, and if you're an Inspection Works account member, uh, you'll be able to access proprietary sort of templates that you might generate, for instance, and you only have access or and your colleagues have access to within your tenant name. So that's a quick way of getting into the, the private store or public store onto the device from an MBIQ perspective. Um, just come back away from that. So uh, just wanted to pause here at this stage and, and ask you a short question. Uh, it's a poll question. Um, from a video boroscope data perspective, what is your biggest pain point when it comes to managing video boroscope data? I just want to give you about 30 seconds or so to really read through and click uh, the appropriate uh, radio button that applies to you and your inspection uh, tasks. Uh, creating reports, tagging and annotating images, well, no, it's quite difficult to type in things through the keyboard, for instance. Um, or is it organizing the files, sharing the files? Or is it none of those, or is it all of those above? Uh, just, yeah, if you could just spend a few seconds going back through that for us, please. Uh, that would help us very much. Okay, thank you. Um, to the next page. Okay, so quite a lot um, of you are saying, um, okay, yeah, completely understand the time taken to generate reports. If you're not using, obviously, MDI, um, moving away back to the office, back to the desk, or even back to the hotel if you're working airside, generate a report can sometimes take the same or even longer period of time than it is during the inspection itself. So thank you for that. Uh, and, and uh, equal proportion, we're saying all of the above. So it's it's a it's a time-consuming process. We recognise that. So um, thank you for contributing there. Um, inspect, interrogate, and sentence. I'm going to take you through a range of topics now associated with uh, streamlining the inspection workflow. Um, so a range of topics here um, associated with real 3D measurement. Hopefully you've uh, been able to spend time and contribute and watch perhaps live or playback, video record the webinars that we've discussed already, especially those containing uh, pertaining to real 3D measurement. Um, we have um, proprietary measurement technology that really allows you to perform inspections and measurements uh, concurrently. There's no need to withdraw the probe and switch to a measurement stereo tip, for instance, and carry out that activity and then move back to uh, an optical tip. Um, so, but moving on, we now have uh, new measurement types. Uh, there's a, a new radius gauge measurement that I might touch on um, if we have time. Um, but also we're evolving real 3D measurements and have exposed this new feature earlier this year on the MVIQ, which is called 3D stitching. So the ability to stitch images together um, and perform that activity on the device uh, on live images uh, or live saved images, but also uh, recalled images. 
and uh, a moment to spend associated with um, talking about ADR and play counter. We class these as analytics on our device on our MVI keyboard scope. So I'll take you back to my board scope image. So I'll quickly start associated with real 3D measurement. So I'm back on my boroscope. I'll just quickly capture an image of the, what we have here as a simulated NIC. And just if you're not familiar with real 3D measurement, just perform a, a simple point to line uh, assessment of this NIC that we see machined into the corner or edge of this, of this block that we have. So I'm just roughly assigning cursor points very quickly. Where you see red, there's no measurement data. Uh, so there's one of those points just needs to be adjusted slightly. Um, so I've just quickly performed uh, an assessment of the depth that you see on the on the top of the screen. If I just move it and put it in the center, that's registering as 37 thousandths of an inch. If I press and hold that, converts it back to metric, almost one millimeter, 0.5 millimeters. So if I flick to view, so just demonstrating the uh, the ability to interrogate that image in a real 3D perspective. So here we have the point cloud. If I wanted to, I could split that through to the 2D image and the point cloud on the right-hand side. And I, I'm basically trying to determine whether or not the plane of that measurement coincides with the plane of the component. Um, I can see that really some fine adjustment of that, those cursor placements is really required by the user, by me in this case. I'm trying to just smarten up those cursor positions. And by having uh, the point cloud visible, in this case, I've chosen to have it visible on the, on the right-hand side. I might choose to just have it on the point cloud view and adjust those points in this view. That's now possible. Uh, uh, and basically, I'm just trying to align up the, uh, the, the, the plane of the measurement along with the plane of, in this case, this simulated aerofoil or test plate. Um, so that's quickly just an overview, a very quick overview of real 3D measurement in terms of optimizing uh, the workflow, making sure that your cursor points are really positioned in, in a very appropriate position so that you've got a good assignment or a good feel for what that measurement is. You can see how it's dropped from 0.95 millimeters to 0.91 millimeters. That that could be a, an important difference. That could take the, the defect to uh, not acceptable. Uh, that could have exceeded the acceptance threshold for that defect type in that location on the compressor blade, for instance, down to a point where it's below the threshold and the engine can return to a serviceable state. So those fine tuning activities are important. And that's available to you using the same tip that you would use to perform the inspection. So just come back to live. Um, just want to take you through some other measurement types that really um, do allow you to um, perform uh, inspections uh, very um, easily, very quickly. They even assist you in the placement of the cursors. So you may have seen this image uh, uh, flagged up on a previous webinar. So I'm just going to take you through, in this case, depth profile. Um, this is the point cloud view. I'm invited to, uh, because of depth profile, I'm wanting to in, uh, understand the maximum height between two reference uh, positions that I've, I've placed the two cursors either side of the weld. And the instrument has performed this automatic assessment of the maximum position above that above that point. Flip to maximum in a full image rather than a measurement image. You see it in overall context. So if that was a challenge and I want to understand what that maximum profile was, uh, is it really 1.91 millimeters? Um, whilst keeping that on screen, I'm just going to add another uh, measurement type, in this case, area depth profile, and just understand by creating the reference plane and a third point placed on the other side of the screen, you can see actually the instrument has, has decided actually the location and the size or maximum size in this case above that reference plane, which is a curved surface in this case, doesn't have to be a flat surface, uh, is actually not 1.91 millimeters, it's 2.43 millimeters. So a quick, really quick, valuable tool, in this case, area depth profile, um, uh, to uh, determine, in this case, the, the height, the maximum height above the reference plane. Um, um, so if I just move to full image, 
perhaps I was interested in the maximum or the minimum. Um, um, let me just, sorry. That's that. I'm just, sorry, forgive me, I'm just getting mixed up. I've just uh, energized the tip model feature uh, where I've been able to um, determine the location of the tip uh, point uh, of, of uh, capture. That's something that's also available on other measurement types, not just this measurement type. Um, and uh, if I chose to, I, I can determine what those distances were from the target. As this was a sort of an oblique shot, you can see uh, the blue colors represent those, those surfaces that were closest to the, to the tip upon capture. Uh, and obviously increasing to the red zone as those surfaces uh, project further away. So there's a range of uh, a lot of information, different views. Um, like to switch to um, this view, such that you've got a 2D arrangement on the left and the profile view on the right. Um, if I was interested in perhaps looking at the minimum distance below the reference plane, by having this view energized, you can go to the option screen and see above plane or below plane. I've selected below plane, so um, the placement and obviously the distance has changed significantly from where it was before over two millimeters. The, the minimum is now 0.4 millimeters, you'll see. So it's all very quickly recognized by the instrument. Another, another measurement type uh, associated with sort of the automatic uh, recognition capabilities that the device has is blade tip clearance. Um, so let me just take you through a short video. Um, since I don't have an, I'm not by the engine like Dennis is, is so this has been pre-recorded, um, where I've been inside a, a CFM 56 and captured some data associated with, in this case, some compressor blades in a, in a stage uh, within the booster. Um, by pressing auto repeat and then pressing the blade tip clearance button, uh, this has not been speeded up. This is sort of real time recorded. Um, uh, it's able to recognize the, the tip of the blade and the shroud and, and basically be able to uh, determine that, uh, that distance uh, across the cord of the blade uh, and present all that information at a maximum, minimum, and average size. So, quickly just show you another image because auto repeat was pressed. Uh, you don't have to play to press blade tip clearance. So one button press, and it's going to uh, capture a blade tip clearance measurement. And within a few seconds, there you have it again for blade number two. In a moment uh, later on, I'll be taking you through blade counter. But you can imagine using this this technique in conjunction with the live analytical blade counter, you can be labeling the blades with an actual number, such that when you're saving and recording this footage during the inspection, you're able to identify certain features and certain values that uh, uh, correspond to the tip clearance against the blade number, for instance. So it's a very powerful tool that's all available now on the boroscope. Right, come away from that. So that's, that's blade tip clearance. We've covered area depth profile, depth profile, and um, a quick sort of a view of the point cloud of a point to line measurement. So they're very powerful tools, lots of different measurement types associated with um, um, real 3D measurements. There's up to, uh, that number's gone up to nine now, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yep, yeah, including radius gauge. Now this is a, just quickly show you an image associated with radius gauge. Wasn't gonna really enter into it, but this is a copy of a, of a blend and the instrument has inserted a, a go no go gauge associated with uh, a relationship between the depth of the blend and and the radius of the of the uh, of, of, of the of the circle so it's a, it's used as a go no go gauge in some in some blend repair schemes um, and here is an example where actually the the shape of this lead out on the blend does not conform to the acceptance criteria. It needs to be more of a more machining is required into the lead out of here in order to de-stress this component, this part of the component, and make it into a serviceable uh, condition. So this is a, a new feature that's coming out um, in a couple of months' time um, on on the MVIQ analyze model over the air. So. 
keep an eye out for the next uh, updates. Other things are included in that software update, but Radius Gauge included as one of them. Uh, in this case, uh, uh, applicable for um, uh, borrow blend repair schemes, uh, borrow blend repair activities, um, in order to make sure that you're happy with um, the, the shape. And it's, it's of course, uh, able to provide a, a circle gauge such that you can determine the acceptability of the other the other shape and the other uh, depth associated with this with this tip blend. Okay, um, moving away from the single images associated with blade tip clearance, I'm just going to quickly take you through um, um, 3D stitching. Here we have a previously saved image. Um, just going to quickly show you. Actually, this looks like one saved image. Um, but actually, uh, this is uh, a, a composite image that contains three separate images. Um, just, so oh, that's not looking good. Let me just, so if I turn on my depth map, you can see um, it's slightly corrupted, but uh, you can see different three different bands. That's just one way of basically determining quickly um, that this is a composite image. Turn that off. That's just going to. Yeah, that's not come through right. I'm not quite sure what's covered there, but forgive me. Um, so I've just clicked on measurement image and been able to interrogate uh, an area measurement that contain that spans those three images. So this is a very powerful tool to carry out one measurement on, in this case, one image once it's stitched together, rather than having to uh, perform this, this, this instance on separate images, in this case, separate three images, and then combine them together and obviously compound the error associated with combining that. Um, you can treat this like the other 3D phase measurement instances, an area, an area example, using uh, 3D stitching. So this is now also available as a result of uploading to, upgrading to version 3.6 uh, software release. Yeah, that's the first time that's looked like that. So that's interesting. So forgive us for that one. Okay. Now, a lot of content to go through. So I was going to take you through now ADR and analytics. Um, so again, uh, in conjunction with the rollout of 3.6 earlier this year on MVIQ, we have this additional button, not just I've taken you through the new button for store, for inspection work store. Here we have a new button for analytics. Um, so I'm going to just press analytics and enter this space associated with still analytics or live analytics. So this is how we energize the defect recognition analytics. Uh, I'm going to just turn on LM2500 assist. And an icon appears that you might see on the, I'm just encircling it with my mouse pointer. That's, that basically is telling that one, uh, one analytic or more has been activated on the device. Um, I'm just quickly taking you through some um, stored images that I have on my thumb drive associated with um, LM2500 Assist. And these, these are contained on your, on your device as well uh, once you upgrade. So going to ADR, LM2500, and we have a range of sample images. Um, I've just clicked on one from a combustor that was captured from a combustor. These weren't images that went into train the analytic. These are images that the analytic uh, never really actually did see, but were trained on images from the combustion chamber. So I'm presenting it with a fresh image that it's never seen before and invited to uh, analyze it. And it's you can see there's a range of um, bounding boxes that appear. And it not only detects those, uh, those anomalies, but also from an LM2500 assist perspective, it also categorizes them. In this case, it's, it's characterized as three. And you can see the green one that's in focus. If I tap on the other ones, the other ones go green. And I'm invited, let me just, invited to accept or reject. So I'm going to reject those two and accept crack. And you see the, the status bar saying all indications have been removed. If I wanted to, I could uh, not just accept or reject them, but I could change the classification. These are classifications that are locked into this analytic since all of the images that went into train this analytic uh, conform to all of these uh, characterizations or indeed to none of them it was also presented with images that were that were acceptable so this is now this is now available for all 
users. Uh, it's a free trial for those that upgrade on the MVIQ to 3.6 for 90 days. Um, so yeah, give it a go. It's a uh, it's a very powerful tool. It's now uh, we we showed this on the webinar number one, where we don't just have this analytic, we also have analytics exposed to you from Air Innovations um, that you that you also saw in this page. So Air Light Combustor and Air Light Rotate, those are very powerful um, aviation-based uh, analytics. By clicking on to the info button, you get access to a data sheet. Um, Blade Counter, the other live analytic, I'm just going to load up a short video. Since that is an analytic that works that works in the live state, and since I'm sat in my office, uh, it's better for me to just show you some example images. Um, won't show you the image, the video associated with blade tip clearance. Um, I will load up one image here, so one video here that was captured within. Um, so it doesn't show you me setting up the analytic but um, giving you one different view. In this case, the, the shroud of what looks like to be the LP turbine, in this case, probably on the CFM 56. Um, the, the, the rotor is being turned in one direction and then the other. So be, one of my colleagues was sat in the inlet, rotating the fan, and you can see the blade counter moves up or down, depending on the direction of rotation. I've not shown you the blade setup steps associated with that. That was kind of covered uh, briefly in, in another webinar. All of this information is also available on the website uh, and, and on the store. So um, let's uh, uh, show you another one whilst I'm talking it through. Um, another view, different view, different stage, not in the turbine this time, up in the compressor, you can tell by the abradable liner. Um, in this case, must be the HP compressor. You can see by uh, the jerky movement of the blades. Um, um, uh, rotating that shaft through the accessory gearbox. You can see it's very, it's a difficult procedure to make it very smooth. The analytic is really able to really adjust to that and and uh, and re reflect a good, accurate presentation of that blade number. Um, so I was going to end my, my point there um, and take you through just a quick overview before asking you again, just one more poll question. I've talked to you about range of technological advances that we've made in the real 3D space associated with the new measurement types and also the uh, automated sort of depth assist features with, that we have with depth and depth profile and area depth profile and also blatant clearance. It's worth mentioning blatant clearance really meant to utilize that to the best abilities to combine that with uh, the long range 3D face measurement tip. It's a very powerful tip that enables you to capture far more information um, than the uh, corresponding blue 3D face measurement side facing tip. Um, and yes, quickly touched on 3D stitching and also analytics. Um, so yeah, this is the last of three three webinars that we've taken you through. I've, I've thoroughly enjoyed uh, uh, preparing them and, and uh, presenting them to you, uh, me and my colleagues. Um, we've covered probability of detection, real 3D measurement, and this one, the gas turbine inspection, sort of streamlined workflow activities that we have on our boroscope. Um, we want to do more of these. Um, I thoroughly enjoy them, so do my colleagues. Uh, it's, it's great to connect in this way. Uh, what topic would you like to know more about in future sessions? So please click the appropriate button. Um, only takes a second. I would give you another sort of 30 seconds or so. Um, or closing it out and um, inviting us. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll address the, the Q&A shortly. Okay, just give you a few more seconds. Thank you very much. Excellent, thank you. Focus sessions on measurement and analytics and shortcuts, tips and, tips and tricks. Okay, great, thank you. And all of the above, I just like that one. All of the above, just keep it coming. <laughs> so 
Very good. Thank you very much for all of that. Um, right. Thank you. I shall hand over now to um, Dennis and we'll talk through your Q&A. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Tom. Nice job. Um, so we'll get into the Q&A here in a moment. But just a reminder that uh, the Mentor Visual IQ comes with a free 90 day trial of all these features that we just showed you. So measurement, analytics, a lot of these new features that come out, um, you get 90 days to test those out when you buy a new product and when you update your software. So when you update to the latest software, that 90 day trial begins. Um, and actually somebody had a relevant question to this. So somebody asked, um, said, you mentioned free trials with Mentor Visual IQ. How do I upgrade my Mentor Visual IQ? Maybe you can show me on screen. So I don't know, Tom, could that be something you show how you go ahead and do a software update or maybe show the settings screen? Yes, good. Okay, let me share. I can do that. I'll just share my screen again. Okay, so you should be seeing my, my Boroscope screen again, back to the live state. Okay, so press the menu button or the shortcut uh, uh, Waygate logo at the bottom left-hand side, and you enter what we call the, the global menu. Switch across to settings. Now, the first thing uh, for you to ensure is, um, I'm just gonna use my mouse pointer, is make sure you're connected to a network. So I'm, I'm sat at home, so I'm connected to my home Wi-Fi, Make sure this is activated. And so if I click to connectivity, you can see I'm, I'm connected to uh, my network that I have at home. Um, that's important because it needs to understand um, where, what state your, your instrument is in in comparison to what is on the inspection work store. So um, by clicking to system, uh, no, clicking to about, you can see that I'm operating on 3.61. So that came out in May this year. Ignore this little circle here because I've got um, contained within my memory stick that I have on my instrument, I have a, a development piece of software on my memory stick. So my Boroscope wants to upgrade to the latest that I have. And we're working on uh, 3.65 at the moment, but I'm not gonna install it on this device because I have a separate device for installing development software. Um, but here's, here's the state where you press uh, software update. You sit in the settings screen, press check now. And a software update is available to, to me on this device because it sees on my memory stick that I have a version that's 3.65 available. If I took out my memory stick, which I'll do now, and press check now. I'm already on the latest software um, release, uh, which is 3.61. Um, it, it's the same as 3.61 that you see on, on this point here. So make sure you're connected to the network, press check now, and if it detects a new software update, then you can download uh, it takes, in this case, for 3.61, it took me about 15 minutes to download using my, my signal from my home, and then perhaps another five, six, seven minutes to install it. It all does it automatically on the device. There is one that invite, invites you to reboot the system once. So over the course of, let's say, 20 minutes in, in completion, you tap a soft key that says reboot, and it installs it all, all, all for you. So that's how you quickly check on your device and it's a, a similar workflow not the same but very similar and more, even more convenient isn't it on your mental flex but make sure you're connected to the network first okay thanks tom yeah tom mentioned it the everest mentor flex can also do over the air software updates as long as you're connected it's actually going to automatically download the software for you all you have to do is go to settings about and tap the install button and they, they usually take about five minutes on the Metroflex to download. And we will be launching a, a new software release on Metroflex in Q4 of this year. And one of the cool features that you can expect with that is HDR, high dynamic range, which we talked about in the first webinar, POD. So that's an exciting new feature coming on Metroflex. Uh, Tom, we have another question for you here. Um, this person looks like they were paying attention. So you mentioned that there are nine measurement types on Mentor IQ now. 
what are those nine measurement types? Right, good. Um, so if I flick to my other handset, um, on my screen, I guess there's no point really sharing the screen, but I already have, because um, um, I have development software on, on my other handset. Um, so if I roll off the eight that exist today, um, there's length, point to line, depth and area, multi-segment, depth profile, area depth profile, and blade tip clearance. So that adds up to eight, and the ninth is the radius gauge that you heard me briefly. I know I, I went through it very quickly, but the, the ninth one is radius gauge. Uh, again, that will be part of 3.65 that gets released in August. So not long now, another two months or so. Well, within two months, because it will be before the end of August, uh, radius gauge will be released and included in all MVIQ uh, analyzed models and be available a la carte for uh, feature key activation for the inspect and touch models. Great. Uh, so we're, we're a bit over time. Let's see if we can squeeze one last question in here. Um, so another one for you, Tom. It says, will the LM2500 assist analytic find defects on other engine types? Okay, yes. The answer is yes. Um, it has been validated on inspection data of Four, over 4,000 images. Again, this is obtainable from the data sheets. Uh, so by all means, access and read the data sheet. Those are, there's lots of information about the analytics associated with each analytic. We've published a data sheet. And by uh, opening the data sheet uh, for LM2500, it even says in the Q and A's at the back of that sheet that over 4,000 images were used to train that analytic. And it was validated on over 400 images um, upon which some of those were in the samples folder. And yes, it can be used on other engine types. It's just not validated on other engine types. But yes, determining a NIC or missing TBC or, or other defect classifications are very similar on other engine types. But we don't yet uh, call it uh, uh, associated, and it's not trained on other engine types. So we've declared that it's trained on the LM2500, which is just worth mentioning. It's a CF6-6 aero derivative. Um, so it is a almost an aero, um, aero ADR analytic itself. Okay. All right, well, I think that does it for questions. So with that, we really appreciate the audience joining us today to go through these topics um, and look forward to uh, joining you in future webinars. So we'll close up shop now. So thank you very much. Thank you, thank you.